Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome students to today's lecture. We are in the process of discussing different postulates of quantum mechanics. We have covered some ground and in today's class we will discuss one particular uh, aspect and this concerns the commutation properties of the operators. In our earlier class we once mentioned that the commutator of two operators A B is evaluated as A B minus B A. We saw that in some cases the operators commute that means A B operator is equal to B A and in some other cases they do not commute. In today's class we will discuss the consequences of this commutation and non-commutation of operators in, in quantum mechanics and how we can interpret interesting results based on these commutation properties. That we would do in terms of uh, two theorems. The first one to discuss is, is the theorem which suggests which tells, tells that if two operators A and B have a common complete set of eigenfunctions then operator A and operator B they commute. We already know that if we have a Hermitian operator, operator A or even Hermitian operator, operator B, then operator A has a complete set of orthonormal eigenfunctions. And since operator B is also an, a Hermitian operator, so therefore operator B also has a complete set of orthonormal eigenfunctions. But today in, in this uh, theorem, what we are telling is that operator A and operator B have not only complete set of eigenfunctions, but these complete set eigenfunctions are common to both. In other words, if I, ha I have a complete set of eigenfunctions a phi, which is an wh where eigenfunction f n is an eigenvalue of operator a with eigenvalue a n, the operator b also has the same eigenfunction f n, but of course, it would have a different eigenvalues. So, a n and b n are the eigenvalues corresponding to operator a and b, whereas f n is eigenfunction to both operator a and b. In this theorem, we are going to discuss that if, if we have two operators a and b that have common complete set of eigenfunctions, then we will show that a and b operator they commute. Well, just to remind you, when we say operator A and B they commute, we mean this which is also given as operator A operator B minus operator B operator A. This is given and this is what we are going to prove. So, let us state that the state of the system is uh, given by psi and since psi and psi is any arbitrary function, but if psi is an arbitrary function we know that since f i s form a complete set of uh, orthonormal functions, we can express psi as a linear combination of this eigenfunctions f i s. We would use this state function and evaluate the left hand side here. So, When we see here, we know the sum rule of the operator algebra. So, in the first case here, we will first apply operator B on the wave function and in the second uh, term, we will first apply the operator A on this wave function, but before that let us expand this operator uh, wave function psi as See operator B, the uh, function, uh, the functions f i, the function f i is actually an eigenfunction of operator B with an eigenvalue of a, a b i. So I see this. So when operator B acts on these terms, so of course c i is a coefficient that is this is constant. So when B acts on, um, when B acts on f i, I get.
And similarly, in this term, I will first see the action of a operator a on the eigenfunction f i. So, we know that when operator a acts on eigenfunction f i, I get eigenvalue a i. Now, I am left with another operator here, operator a. This c i is the coefficient, is a constant, b i is the eigenvalue again a constant. So, operator a can act on uh, eigenfunction f i to give me c i b i and when operator a acts on this function, I get a i f i minus. Now, when I look at the action of operator b on this function, so I see What do I see here? If when I look at the first term and the second term, I see that these are simple uh, the, the constants C i, the eigenvalues B i and A i. Similarly, here eigenvalues A i and B i, it does not matter how I multiply these constants, they are going to be the same. So, they, these two terms are essentially the same. So, therefore, the right hand side of this expression is 0 and then we see that A b minus B a is 0, therefore, A and B commute. How did we arrive at this point? We arrived at this point by making one assumption is that f n or f i in this case or this com, com, uh, complete set of eigenfunctions f i are eigenfunctions of operator a as well as they are eigenfunctions of operator b. So, they are common complete set of operators a and b. In, if that is true, then the operators a and b they commute. We would look at another uh, theorem, which states actually the reverse of the, uh, the statement, which says that if two operators A and B, they commute with each other, then they must have a common complete set of eigenfunctions. In the previous theorem, we proved, we discussed that if two operators have common complete set eigenfunctions, they commute, but now we say that if two operators commute, we can always construct a common complete set of eigenfunctions for them. So, suppose let us say uh, I start with operator A and I say that f i is uh, an eigenvalue, uh, f i is an eigenfunction of this operator A with, a, with, the, with an eigenvalue a i, where f i is they form a complete set of eigenfunctions. Uh, I would now apply operator B on both sides of this equation. So, operator B when it acts on the A i are eigenvalues, so they are, they are constant, I can interchange them. So, I take A i this side, I keep B f i. I, I started with an assumption that f i is are eigenfunction of operator A and only operator A. I do not say anything about whether they are eigenfunction of operator B or not, but I know that operator A and B they commute. Since operator A and B they commute, I can immediately write that B A F I should be equal to A B F I. So, this is equal to this, I just keep that whatever is there in the right hand side. When you look at this equation, you would see that if I write this equation in a slightly different way, you would real notice it better. This equation tells that B f i, B is an operator, when it acts on a function, it gives rise to a function, we do not know what, but it gives to a function, gives rise to a function. When operator A acts on this function B f i, it gives me back this function B f i multiplied by a constant which is a i. So, this equation tells that b f i is also an eigenfunction of operator a, if of f i is an eigenfunction of operator a. If f i is an eigenfunction of operator a, b f i is also an eigenfunction of operator a. How did I get, get here? We took, we took one thing given that operators A and B commute. So, this, this is a necessary condition. So, now we see that B f i is also an eigenfunction of operator A. Not only that, 
B f i is not only an Eigen function of operator a, but it is an Eigen function of operator a with the same Eigen value a i as Eigen function f i. So, you see the Eigen function f i corresponds to Eigen value a i, but Eigen function B f i also corresponds to the same Eigen value a i. So, in when such a case, uh, when such a situation arises, we say that this Eigen function B f i, which is an Eigen function of operator a, we just saw this Eigen function must be a linearly dependent function on the function f i, the other Eigen function. So, this Eigen function must be linearly dependent, linear dependent function on f i. So, when I say that I essentially mean that I can write some constant multiplied by f i. So, B f i is some constant multiplied by f i. When I look at here, let us give a name to this, this constant. Allow me to give this name B. So, then you see that f i in this equation when you look at, you would see that f i is actually an Eigen function of B operator with an Eigen value of B. So, this is what we wanted to see that we started our discussion by telling f i is Eigen function of operator A and we did not make any statement whether it is an Eigen function of operator B or not. We then carried out a small exercise where I we showed by using the commutation property of A B operators, we showed that if f i is an func Eigen function of operator A, B f i is also an Eigen function of operator A and that too with the same Eigen value A i. And in that case, Eigen function 2 that is B f i is a lin linearly dependent function on another, the Eigen function f i. So, therefore, B f i is a constant multiplied by f i and this tells me that f i is also an Eigen function of operator B. So, when I started with this premise that when two operators A and B commute, they actually we ended up showing that they have a common complete set of Eigen functions. So, both way true. So, if we have two operators who have common complete set of Eigen functions, they commute and when they commute, they always have a common complete set of Eigen functions. Next, we would discuss what are the consequences of this commuting or non-commuting operators. And in particular, we will discuss their uh, relation with uncertainty. Suppose I have two operators A and B, they commute. Operators, operator A commute with operator B. And suppose uh, I have my state of the system is given as f n, which for the uh, simplicity in discussion, suppose state of the system is f n, which is also an Eigen function of operator A. And if it is an Eigen function of operator A and operator B and A they commute, so therefore, this is also an Eigen function of operator B. So, when I evaluate the expectation value of or the average value corresponding to operator A, when the system is an Eigen function of operator A, then the allowed observable is simply A n, which is actually the Eigen value corresponding to op Eigen function F n. If I write down the expectation value of B, since the state is F n, which is also an Eigen function of operator B. So, therefore, I will see only one Eigen value and that is B n. No matter how many systems I prepare and how many times I do the measurement, every time I will get Eigen value B n as the outcome of measurement of B. And similarly, every time I would get A n as the outcome of measurement of operator A, when the state of the system is an Eigen function of either A or B and since A and B commute. So, therefore, F n is both Eigen function of Eigen function of both operator A as well as operator B. Now, what you do is that we would introduce another operator call operator x such that operator A and operator x they do not commute. Since operator A and x they do not commute, so therefore, the state of the system f of n is not an Eigen function of operator x. So, when I make a measurement of operator x on 
eigen uh, uh, on the state function f n, what should I get? I will get as as per postulate three the only outcomes uh, only al allowed outcomes are the eigenvalues of that corresponding operator. That is what I would get. So let us first define what are the eigen eigen functions and eigen values of operator x. Suppose we say that uh, operator x has the set of eigen function g i with eigen value x i g i. If since uh, x would be a quantum mechanical operator, so therefore, it would be Hermitian operator. So, g i s also form a complete set of eigen functions and x i s the small x, x i s they are they are real because we are taking that x is a uh, Hermitian operator which does not commute with operator A. So, in this case when I make the measurement for operator x and calculate the average value or the expectation value, what should I get? I would actually get not a precise value because f n the, the state of the system is not an eigenfunction of operator x. In this case what I can do is that since g i s the eigen function of operator x they form a complete set of orthonormal functions. So, I can express any arbitrary function. Now, any arbitrary function becomes f n which is the state of the system f n as a linear combination of g i s. Why g i s? Because g i s are the eigen function of operator x which form a complete set. So, if my state of the system is not an eigenfunction of this operator x, I can express the state of the system as a linear combination of the complete set of eigenfunctions of this operator x. When I do that, I then I evaluate the average value or the expectation of value of this operator x, then I know uh, the outcome of uh, postulate 4 is that the outcome of this experiment are going to be C i square which will actually be the probability of finding and but what would you get? You would always get the eigen values of that corresponding operator. So, in this, in this case the expectation value of operator x will not be a single quantity, single outcome rather if I prepare 10,000 number of identical copies of the system and I make measurement corresponding to operator x some percentage like uh, 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 sometimes I would get x 1 which is eigen value corresponding to f 1, some other number of times I would get x 2 which corresponds to the eigen value uh, 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 second eigen value corresponding to g 2 and sometimes I would get c uh, x 3. So, a different uh, copy of this uh, system would give me a uh, different uh, outcome, but every time the only allowed outcomes are either x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 or so on and so forth. At the end of this experiment I can count how many times I got x 1, how many times I got x 2, how many times I got x 3 and they would actually be represent will be represented by the c i uh, ci square which will be telling that what percentage of the experiments gave me x 1, what percentage of the experiment gave me x 2. So, there will be actually a distribution of the observe uh, 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 outcomes. Sometimes I will get x 1, sometimes I would get x 2, but only x 1, x 2, x 3 these are the only allowed because they are the Eigen values these are the only allowed observables. On the other hand when I make measurement corresponding to operator A and B no matter how many identical copies of the system I have prepared every time I make a measurement corresponding to operator A or corresponding to operator B I am going to get only one outcome that outcome is predefined it is a n if I am making measurement corresponding to operator a and it is b n when I am making uh, uh, a measurement corresponding to operator b. But only when I measure x then I have a distribution. So, this means that I have an uncertainty when I make a measurement corresponding to x whereas when I make measurement corresponding to a and b I am pretty certain that I am going to get one Eigen value and only one Eigen value. So, why is x different? How is x different from a and b? The key difference here is operator a and b they commute with each other. So, therefore, a and b can be precisely measured simultaneously, they can be simultaneously me measured and they can be they, they can have a precise value. But since operator a does not commute with operator x and by implication operator b also does not commute with operator x, therefore, I cannot precisely determine both a 
observable as well as x observable. If I made my system Eigen function of operator A, that means I decide I have decided that the determination of operator A will be precise. So, therefore, there, there is an uncertainty corresponding to uh, the measurement of operator x. So, commutation or rather non commutation is closely related to uncertainty principle. We are we are all aware of this position momentum uncertainty principle, but now we next we will discuss is that that particular aspect we would see whether position and momentum operators they commute or not. So, the task at hand is to evaluate the commutation of x p x which is simply x a b minus b a. We would do that by taking a state function psi So, the first term and now we would use the functional form of these operators. So, functional form of operator x is simply x minus i h bar d by d x that is operator p x minus So, minus i h is constant. So, I am keep bringing it out. So, minus minus become plus i h bar and when I differentiate I see here x psi that they are multiplied. So, I have to be careful I will have to do uh, two differentiation. I keep x out and then the next, next step I take uh, psi out. So, therefore, d x by d x gives me 1. So, when I look here the first term the first two term cancel out because they are plus or minus the same. So, at the end I am left with i h bar psi. So, since I had this psi on the left hand side, so if I have to show only x p x value, then I drop psi from the right hand side and I see i h bar and I see x and p x they do not commute. Since they do not commute, there is an inherent uncertainty in measuring both of both the observable simultaneously. So, this is what Heisenberg's uncertainty principle told us that if we make uh, a measurement on x, if we want to if we have determined x precisely, then we cannot determine p x precisely and, and vice versa. So, the uncertainty principle is very closely related to the non commutation of the operators. We would now discuss uh, some commutation rules and we will see how we can determine dif many different uh, uh, um, determine commutation of different operators by using these commutation uh, rules. Uh, first rule is if uh, the commutation between commutator between operator A and B is equal to the negative of it, the negative of commutation of B and A. So, of course, if A and B commute, so therefore, left hand side uh, B and A also commute. So, therefore, left hand side and right hand side both are 0. So, minus sign does not bother us there, but if they do not commute, so A B is equal to minus B A. So, we already have seen the, uh, the result that commutation of x P x is I h bar. So, if I ask that what would be the uh, if I ask what would be the result p x x. Since we have already determined x p x as i h bar, so we know a b equals minus b a. So, this is going to be minus i h bar and we can use uh, this relation for uh, whenever there is a need for it. The next relation that we are going to discuss is that the 
if we have to uh, uh, evaluate a commutation between operator A and some uh, power of that particular operator A, then the they, they, then these two operators they commute. For example, uh, if I have to commute A, uh, if I have to find x and x square commutation, I know that they are going to be 0. Similarly, P x P x square is going to be 0. Next, we see that if we have a constant k multiplied to operator a and then I have k a and b commutation, we can simply take this constant out of this commutation and do this uh, commutation evaluation. I can do the same even if there is a even when there is a constant k is multiplied to operator b. So, an example of this could be if I have to do this commutation, what would it be? So, I simply take the constant 2 out and I see x p x and I already know what is its value. So, I am done here. Next I see if I have one of these two uh, uh, operators that I am commuting, if there is a uh, summation over here, then please uh, see the way it is written a the commutation of operator a with b plus c. In that case first you do a with b and then you come with to a with c. Similarly, if I have a plus b and then co its commutation with operator c, first I do with a c and then b c. So, an example could be if I have x, uh, x plus b x. So, please, these are all uh, operators. Uh, so, in that case I can do x, x plus x p x. I know x x will be 0 because a a to the power n is 0 and x p x I already know. So, I can use this relation. Uh, similarly, at, at the end we have uh, this, this uh, product uh, rule. So, if I have a commutation with b c, there are two operators which are, which are uh, shown as, as product. In that case, what I would do is that I would first take this b out and evaluate the commutation a c, but please remember this b which is in the left side so should come out as in the left. So, b a c and then in the second I evaluate I do the commutation of a with b and since this c is in the right hand side it comes right. This ordering is very important if we make a mistake then uh, we will we'll get um, a very wrong results. So, uh, to, to evaluate this one an example for this uh, application of this is that if I ask you to determine this what would you do. So, you can express this in terms of as a product x p x p x and I have operator a operator a operator b c they are pro, uh, uh, rule, uh, given as a product and then you can evaluate this first then this first and without doing any more evaluation because we already know x p x then we can easily evaluate this. Can you show me my screen please? So, in today's class we learnt some important properties of commuted commutation. We saw that when two operators commute, they can have common complete set of eigenfunctions and uncertainty principle is closely relate, related with commutation of operators. And we also discussed some rules with which we can evaluate commutation of two different operators. Thank you for your attention.